Whether I'm using them to create a roasted red pepper sauce in a minute or throwing green chilies on a smash burger, I haven't been able to keep these roasted peppers in my fridge because I keep eating them too fast. Like pickled onions, it's one of those things that you can throw on anything, except you can also use them to create new things. Let's break it down. The general four part process is this. Choose a pepper type, prep them, roast them, season them. Real simple. So to start, get out a bunch of peppers. For these ones, I got three red and yellow bell peppers, then just slice them in half and remove the membranes and seeds. Now, this may seem like a lot of peppers, but they do cook down a fair bit in the oven, and based on personal experience, you go through these in like a couple of days, no matter how much you make. Now, as I'm doing this, you may ask, can I use other kinds of peppers? And hell yeah, you can. Just like my enchiladas from last week, I decided to do another batch of Anaheim peppers, which are perfect for just a tiny bit of spice. But some other top pepper candidates to look into are poblanos, Fred snows, or jalapenos. Once sliced, place the peppers cut side down over a baking sheet, and I'm using parchment paper so they are a bit easier to clean after roasting. And then before tossing them in the oven, add a little drizzle of oil and a sprinkle of salt. Toss the prepped peppers in a preheated 425 degree Fahrenheit oven and let roast until the skin has darkened and the flesh has softened. This will probably take about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, I should point out that you could roast these over a gas burner or under the broiler. I just kind of like the hands-off approach of a slightly lower temp, so just let the peppers roast until that skin is noticeably pulling away from the flesh. Once roasted, if you can peel them right away, go for it. But I like to toss them into a bowl and cover it to let them steam for another 15 minutes or so, during which that flesh will soften a little bit more and the skin will really separate it, making it easy to peel. After 15 minutes, remove the peppers from the bowl and just slide that skin off. Now, roasting these peppers have done a couple of cool things. First, texturally, it makes them kind of have this substantial, meaty, and silky texture that almost reminds you of a savory kind of meat or something. And then two, from a flavor perspective, two very important reactions have occurred. First, the caramelization of natural sugars in the peppers provide the sweetness to the pepper, while the Maillard or brownie reaction provides those complex, meaty, and savory flavors. When you combine those two reactions, they're absolutely incredible. Once the skin is removed, just chop or slice them into the desired shape. For the bell peppers, I like doing longer slices, while the Anaheims, I prefer to do a coarse chop or dice. Lastly, it's time to season and store these. I prefer to drizzle a little bit of vinegar over the top of them for some acidity and just some salt to boost the flavor. And then once mixed, just give them a taste as you see fit. Now, you could add seasonings here, for example, a bit of oregano is great, or maybe some flavored oil like olive or chili oil. And for the green chilies, I actually did toss in some freshly sliced garlic and ground cumin. In general, I do like to keep these fairly plain just because it leaves your options a little bit open as those flavorings could always be added later on. To store these, I just toss them into a mason jar or a container, and you could like store them in a bunch of olive oil or something if you wanted to, and they'll probably last a little bit longer. But what I like to do is just leave them plain so they're a lower calorie addition to any number of things that I add them to. Speaking of, here's the two ways that you can use these. Number one, just a straight up topping, or two, use them to create new things. Option one is pretty self-explanatory. For example, I tossed the green chilies onto a smash burger and laid that cheese over the top to get nice and melty this time around, and it's straight up incredible. My favorite ways to use these are on sandwiches, burritos, salads, or as a pizza topping, and it really seems like a little addition, but it goes a long way in making that dish just a little bit better. Now the second option is you can make something out of the roasted peppers. For example, toss them in your hummus and make that roasted red pepper hummus that we typically just buy at the store, or you could turn them into a green sauce like I did for my enchiladas. And another really cool use that I like is pasta. For this one, I added a couple spoonfuls of the roasted peppers to a container and then drizzled in some pasta water over the top and blended that with a stick blender until I liked the consistency. 
After that, I tossed in some oregano, red pepper flake, and a little bit of salt to taste just to boost those flavors. Then to assemble the pasta, I tossed the pasta into a bowl, crumbled in some feta cheese for a bit of creaminess before pouring the pasta sauce over top. Lastly, I hit it with some fresh parsley and just mixed everything together. And you have this delicious pasta that literally the only time it takes is the time to cook the pasta. The options here are truly limitless. So in conclusion, you've got to make some of these, get these things in your fridge. You know, you can use them as the topping or kind of more of a foundational ingredient for sauces, hummuses, or, or whatever you want to. But I've been really enjoying having these things around just in my fridge and I've just been throwing them on stuff. And that's literally why I decided to make this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys make some creations, definitely send them to me on Instagram. That's going to wrap it up for me in this one, y'all. Catch you in the next one. Peace.